Hello, welcome to the April edition of SeaGov's The Parish Line. We cover the events, programs, and policies of the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury. On this month's program, we will look at an annual evacuation drill to get responders ready for hurricane season, see new apps from the Calcasieu Parish Library System, and visit the scene of the police jury's Movies Under the Stars. First, construction of the Southwest Louisiana Entrepreneurial and Economic Development Center is nearly complete. Once open, the Seed Center will host the region's first full-scale business incubator to help new and emerging businesses get started. Uh, the whole concept of business incubation is really not a new concept. It's been around for at least 30 or 40 years nationwide. Uh, Louisiana has had several business incubators around the state. We in southwest Louisiana, however, are the last section or last region of the state to actually have a business incubator. So we're very excited about that. The incubator itself, um, this is a concept, just briefly, for people either have a business, small business, home-based business, or maybe they just started a business the last year or so, or have a business idea, concept that they want to start. And we have a process, an application process. We work with them, we assess them to see if it makes sense for them to come into the incubator as what we call a client. They'll actually operate their business out of, physically out of the incubator. They'll have a professional uh, address. They'll have uh, a suite of services from entrepreneurial training to various programs that we have. And we really bring them all together in one roof, if you will, for someone who wants to start a business. Now, even if you're not interested in being an incubator client, there are other programs that we have that we're moving over there under one roof. The, the Small Business Development Center will be there. Uh, SCORE will be there. We have some other entrepreneurial training programs that we've been running for a while that are for anyone who has a small business. So the clients we're looking for are primarily home-based businesses or someone who's, like I say, who just started a business to bring them into this process, because it is a process. It's not just about having an office space. It's about business services. We work with them. We'll have regular meetings with them, not to run their business, but to help them, give them counseling so they do a better job. And hopefully within uh, three to four years, they incubate out of and graduate out of the, out of the incubator and actually either buy a storefront build a storefront or lease somewhere and hire more people. Nationwide, the statistics are that uh, firms or individuals who go through the incubation process, five years later, about 80, 87 percent of them are still in business, which the small business statistics are just the reverse. Businesses that don't go through the incubation process, within five years, about 80 percent of them are not in business anymore. So uh, the incubation process, when implemented, has a tremendous track record of success. The Southwest Louisiana Economic Development Alliance has been helping businesses incubate on a small-scale basis for some time, but construction of the Seed Center will allow for a much larger incubator as well as numerous other services. The Seed Center, and there's a little bit of confusion about it, we say Seed Center sometimes, but the Seed Center is actually the physical uh, uh, building itself. And in the Seed Center, we're going to have not just a business incubator, but we're also going to have the Chamber of Commerce, the Alliance, uh, MCAL, which is our Metropolitan Planning Entity, uh, McNeese State University will have a strong presence there. They'll have a student incubator, an innovation engineering component, uh, some computer facilities. Uh, the McNeese Internship Program will be there, um, in addition to um, that's a, a host of other entities that's going to be there. So in the season, we'll have all of this entrepreneurial economic development activity and, 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 and people right there in one location. The incubator will be a major part of that. We can house about 30 to 35 clients when we're completely full, depending on how much space they need. Having the incubator at the same location as all the other economic development entities is part of the process. Officials hope the suite of services at the Seed Center will create a synergy for business success. How can a business participate? The application process for the incubator is open right now, and we've actually received some applications, quite a few applications, and the timing is um, it's a little fluid still, but we're hoping about May, June to actually physically move into the location, and probably about, I'd say, 30 days after we move in, we hope to have clients ready. Uh, to, to move in also. We don't move them at the same time, but probably shortly after we move in. Four partners are creating the Seed Center and making it possible for the Alliance to make the business incubator a reality. 
One is the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury, which served as project manager and contributed funds for this, for this project. Uh, the city of Lake Charles was also contributed monies to make this a reality. Uh, Magnet State University, which contributed the land that the facility is actually built on, and uh, also the Southwest Alliance, which has contributed money and will serve as the manager for the facility, not so much the program, but the manager for the facility. As construction is completed this summer, SeaGov will have more information on all the programs at the Seed Center and what it will mean for economic development in southwest Louisiana. Some military personnel from the Army's 97th Airborne Civil Affairs Battalion received some unusual training at the parish's Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness last month. Molly Morgan was there. Being ambushed by the media isn't specific to just emergency response personnel. The Calcasieu Parish Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness Director Dick Grimion explains. We're providing space here at the ESC. We've helped them with a couple of their tra uh, training scenarios, uh, one of which was out at our training center. We had a media type exercise here today in the EOC that would replicate uh, something that we might do for a hurricane except uh, the subject was on what they were practicing today. Their role for the Army is much like our role in emergency management. They're a liaison between a local military group and the civilian authorities. And that's sort of what we do here in emergency management. We uh, gather information and get that information out. And our, so our roles are very similar, although we're the civilian side, they're the military side. Lasaria talks about the mission readiness exercise. The purpose of the MRX is to validate our companies before they deploy overseas. In this particular case, uh, we are validating the members and the teams uh, that make up Delta 97th, CA Battalion, Civil Affairs Battalion, uh, as they prepare to deploy here within the next couple of months to the Republic of the Philippines. Um, when they deploy, what is their, what will be their duty? What will they do, actually do once they get over there? Well, uh, interestingly enough, the, the, the tasks and the activities that they've been conducting over the last couple of days here within Louisiana, within, within the four parishes we're, we're, uh, we're operating in, uh, in, 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 in many ways mirror what we would do overseas. And our primary role when overseas uh, is to serve as that, that, that primary liaison element with the civilian population, specifically uh, the population as well as the part, our partner nation governments. So, uh, during this exercise, uh, we truly uh, gain a significant amount of value out of the engagement that we conduct with the members of the local community as well as members of the uh, local local government, in this case the, uh, the Cal Calcasieu Parish. Well, the, the, uh, it, the company has a deployed mission statement and basically to, to, in order to ensure that the, uh, the company is proficient prior to deploying to support that, that mission, uh, we need to con essentially conduct training on specific tasks that support that mission. We refer to those as mission essential tasks. Uh, and there are many collective and individual level soldier tasks that the unit needs to be proficient in in order to execute that, that mission. Our role as a battalion headquarters, a higher headquarters, is to ensure A, that the soldiers receive training on those particular tasks, but prior to deploying, to observe those soldiers and more importantly, validate them to ensure that they're proficient in the execution of those, of those tasks. Howland describes the exercise itself. In this exercise, it simulated a vehicle accident yesterday, as if we were um, in the Philippines, and the, the parish was able to gather people together and bring a real live media exposure, um, simulating what we would experience while in the Philippines. We actually took a lot away from this exercise. Um, this is something you wouldn't be able to get, you know, with people not trained in the media. Um, this, the setup was something fantastic because this is real life and be ha having to be able to deal with that um, at that level it has been phenomenal for us so we took away a lot from that. I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, honestly I think uh, collectively as a group the Calcasieu Parish uh, members, the members of the local media together with the unit I think we really turned the heat up and I was really impressed this morning to see what we had established and you know how we had prepared for this particular media engagement and initially when seeing it I thought that the uh, uh, that the teams were going to be overwhelmed uh, many of them have received if not all of them have received media training before in the past uh, but we've really laid it on and we were prepared we were prepared and we did grill them this morning during uh, this during this media poll and I was I was surprised to see that they handled themselves uh, in as in as professional 
uh, manner as they did. In fact, honestly, I thought when they first stepped in that they were going to get flustered. Uh, there was a significant amount of stress within the room. The cameras were on, the lights were on, the heat was, uh, was being laid on them with all the uh, questioning and, and the actual uh, lights and the, uh, the, the, the mics and the audio and a number of members that we had within the media pool and I honestly thought it was going to overwhelm them but you know they, they handled it, they were calm, cool, collected and they did everything that I expected them to do and they, they, they really they hit it out of the park so I was, I was incredibly impressed with the performance. The 97th Civil Affairs Battalion Airborne is based in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. For the Parish Line, I'm Molly Morgan. Four parishes participated in the training, Beauregard, Calcasieu, Cameron, and Iberia. This was the first media ambush training performed in Louisiana. You are watching The Parish Line, a production of SeaGov. The Calcasieu Parish Public Library has some new digital resources. Here's Jessica Williamson. Laptops, e-readers, and tablets are becoming more popular. The Parish Library is adjusting their services to accommodate new technology. The library system now has its own app. We have several new resources that have just come in. Our main resource that we've just developed is our library app, which you can download at your app store or whichever device that you have. Through the app, there's many different aspects you can do for the library. You can put a book on hold, you can check our catalog, you can download an ebook from the app. And probably one of the neatest things about the app is the barcode scanner which allows a patron, if they're in Books A Million or another bookstore, they can simply scan the barcode on the book. It'll check our catalog and let you know if we have it or not. And if they do have it, you can put it on hold and therefore pick it up at your branch library. The library uses a third-party app for the ebook and audiobook collection called Overdrive. It's another app to download, but it allows Calcasieu to share licensing with neighboring parishes. Overdrive is through our LSW system. It's what, five parishes that we all kind of combined our ebook catalogs together. And if we don't have something here that we purchased through the uh, Calcasieu Parish P Public Library, perhaps Berg or, or Cameron may have that copy on ebook. So it's really, it's, it's one web page where you download your ebooks, but it's a collection of five different parishes. Um, the really great thing about it, it is a separate app. But you'll download your ebook. There's different formats. We have a format for Kindle. We have a format for uh, like iPads. And we also have just a regular EPUB format, which will work on computers and such. Because of licensing, ebooks have the same loan time as regular books. But another benefit of ebooks is no late fees. The great thing about it is, is you can check it out. It's a normal two week loan period. But once you download it, you don't have to worry about putting it back in. It automatically will get put back into the collection, taken off your accounts. So there's no more in and out of the library. You can get your book right there at home, and the book turns in by itself at home. One of the library's newer services is the magazine app Zinio, which allows library cardholders the ability to download current magazines to a device or a computer. We have several hundred magazines to choose from. Popular titles such as Rolling Stone, Cosmopolitan, U.S. Weekly, Consumer Reports, anything like that, and the list grows daily. In Calcasieu alone, the library estimates that 640 residents log on to library computers every day. Every branch has free computers to use. All you need to access them is your library card and your PIN. Of course, if you don't know your library card or your PIN number, you can ask one of the staff members. It's all free. We have all the Microsoft Office uh, components on our computers. We have internet access for those. And those who may not want to use the desktop computers, we also have free Wi-Fi here at your library. All you do is bring in your laptop. When you set up, you click on Internet Explorer. A little pop-up menu will pop up. It'll ask you for your library card number and your PIN. You simply access that and you'll have free Wi-Fi on your computer. For The Parish Line, I'm Jessica Williamson. A complete list of digital resources is available on the library website. Local emergency responders and volunteers participated in their annual evacuation drill recently at the Lake Charles Civic Center. Margaret Higgins has the story. Area agencies recently participated in an evacuation drill to prepare for the upcoming hurricane season. Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness Emergency Response Coordinators Rob Daltrell and Mark Ferguson tells us more. Every year we do an annual transportation exercise to kind of refresh our ideas and make some minor changes 
to our plan uh, to make sure that we uh, have the best flow and the, and the quickest flow to, and the safest flow to, to get the residents out during an evacuation. When it's time to evacuate, when, you know, when the public's notified, we send out the uh, notice to the agencies that assist in the evacuation, they all know what to do. They show up and they, they uh, get their job done. They, everything's been practiced and rehearsed and they know exactly what to do. A lot of preparedness and coordination from various different uh, agencies, from the, from the city, from the parish, from animal control, from the state. So there's a lot of people that have to work together to get this done. We probably have about 100 to 150 volunteers just to be able to do this uh, evacuation. Calcasieu Medical Reserve Corps Coordinator Angela Jewett informs us on how important it is to have volunteers during an evacuation. We have volunteers who are working all aspects of the drill. We have some people that are handing out tags. We have volunteers that are actually um, helping people get on and off the bus. We have greeters. We have people doing a little bit of everything. So we use medical and non-medical personnel. A computer program known as the Phoenix System is used to keep track of residents. Evacuations are a particular concern to the population with medical conditions. Daltrell explains the process. When the individuals come in, we initially screen them to determine whether they have special needs or not. If they do not have special needs, to kind of make things flow a little faster, we'll send those to the one certain area and then they're registered and evacuate. The ones that think they have, might have special needs are screened by nurses, registered nurses and the state has criteria of what will be accepted in the spe medical special needs shelters. So they are sat down, done a medical history on, checked over, and if they do meet those medical special needs, then they are evacuated either by bus, by paratransit, or by ambulance, depending on their medical special needs. Please remember to bring all your medications. Uh, a lot of times, the, there, well, there won't be medications available at the shelters, so please bring your medications. Uh, if you have a medical history uh, written down, it's very nice to have so people can understand that. And also, you can bring one caregiver to go along with you to house in that special medical special needs shelter, but only one uh, special needs, uh, one caregiver per special needs individual. For more information on evacuation preparations, visit the website getagameplan.org or call the Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness at 721-3800. For the Parish Line, I'm Margaret Higgins. As always, local emergency officials encourage citizens to make evacuation plans early and be prepared. The spring weather brings a fun series of events back to our area. J.P. Booth brought his family to a recent showing of the police jury's Movies Under the Stars. Fridays in April are going to be busy here at Prion Lake Park as residents return for the spring series of Movies Under the Stars. We've always had a, an, an idea of doing some creative things here out at uh, Prion Lake Park and, uh, you know, and, and some of our other parks. And one of the ideas that we came up with a long time ago, about five years ago, was uh, showing movies out in, in the field behind me. Uh, there is a lot of room and, and it sort of just fit being right off the lake. It was a great scene. and. Um, and we thought it'd be cool to, to actually show movies outside while you just sort of lay on your picnic uh, blanket or bring your own food and just sort of lounge around and have a good time. So uh, we're entering our fifth year now and uh, it's been pretty successful. We've, uh, we've had large crowds. Uh, we've had some cases where, you know, every, every square inch of the field uh, here is, is filled up with people. And uh, it's just been something that people look forward to uh, twice a year. We do uh, uh, one series in the spring and one in the fall and uh, it's just a nice uh, free event for all of the public to enjoy and, uh, and take in all of the uh, beauty that we have here in southwest Louisiana. More than just offering a free movie, Barnes hopes that these events will encourage families to get out and enjoy the natural beauties that southwest Louisiana has to offer. Well what's great about uh, events like these, community events, is you know obviously one of the, the key elements is the fact that it is a free event and, uh, and, and it's a free event because we want to encourage people of all ages everywhere throughout the parish to come and enjoy something like this. Uh, you know, we tend to get wrapped up in, you know, our electronic world. Uh, at home, we tend to just want to stay home, watch movies or whatever, do something in the house. But 
you know, there is so much of a, uh, uh, a beauty here in this area um, with all of the natural resources that we have, with the waterways and, and great parks like this that uh, it's, it's something that people should always uh, go out and seek. And so having events like Movies Under the Stars is uh, just another way of, of us trying to attract more people to see what they're missing. We're gonna go play it for you real quick uh, once I get everything set up. And uh, once again, welcome to Movies Under the Stars. We're, we'd love to have you here and thank you. Hey. Cheese. <laughs> We always try to, we always try to find uh, great movies that will please all audiences, whether that you're a child or are an adult, and uh, that's sometimes hard to do. But you know, we we usually come out with some really good uh, crowd pleasers, as we call them, and uh, we open this year up with um, uh, something we think is definitely going to become uh, a Disney classic. And that's Wrecked Ralph. That was that came out last year. So we opened that up uh, uh, earlier this month, and then uh, we are going to be back here every Friday in April. Uh, we've got uh, Father of the Bride, um, Mission Impossible 4, and then we're also showing the uh, the the new version of the Muppet movie that came out in 2011. So we've got uh, a, a great lineup this, uh, this spring, and we want everybody to come out. It, it starts at 7 o'clock. The event starts at 7 p.m., and we, uh, we usually wait for the sun to go down, which is usually somewhere around 7.30. But coming out here at 7 o'clock, you get situated. You can have you know, some refreshments that we have here, and uh, it, it gives you time to get ready for the movie. So uh, it's a good system, and we're really uh, happy that it keeps continuing to, to be a, a, a popular event uh, here in Southwest Louisiana, and we hope that it's gonna be around for many years. For the Parish Line, I'm J.P. Booth. If you miss the Mutz events this month, the series will be back for all Fridays in October. Several parish entities took part in the annual Senior Games. Seagov's Jesse Freeman reports. The Senior Olympic Games held annually is a special event where McNeese students and seniors team up. Angela Jewett explains. The Senior Games is something that's held here in, uh, at McNeese State University every year. It's, um, it's a board that we have together with a lot of different programs that come together and we hold it. Um, it's a curriculum for McNeese students that are in health uh, and human services. And what we do, we have different events. We have um, bowling putt-putt, shooting, um, archery. We also have um, free basketball, free throw. We have beanbag baseball. Just a lot of different events for the seniors to participate in. And the students that help with this get a credit as part of their curriculum at McNeese. While the event is titled the Senior Games, there's a large age span of those welcome to participate. There's different ages for different events. Uh, actually, some of the ages are like even 40 years old because that's like in shooting and archery, different things. So and it goes up to um, up to the hundred or however old you make it. The senior games last for several days, ending on April 20th, and involve competitions for those participating. There's first place, second place, and third place. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing actually field and track out at the field. Um, it's very competitive. One of our real competitive sports is beanbag baseball. That's then that will be actually next Tuesday. The games are sponsored by a board composed of several agencies, including the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury. Um, the Calcasieu Parish Police Jury, uh, a lot of us on the board that work for the Police Jury and Human Services, and part of our job in especially Medical Reserve Corps too, we, um, we are affiliated and do a lot of the work with the senior games. We have a um, first aid tent that we have um, nurses, certified nurses that are here, registered nurses that are here to work that tent in case someone gets hurt or uh, injured, they're there uh, covering the event. McNeese State University also plays a major role in the games. Um, one, it's, you know, one of the really important aspects of our program is McNeese State University. Like I said, the students, it's a, um, they get a credit for doing this and it's part of their curriculum. It's taught to them during the school year how to run the games and how to tally scores and everything. So it's just a, it's a real great partnership with Mackey State University. For the Parish Line, I'm Jesse Freeman.
That's it for the Parish Line for April. Thanks for being with us. More details on all of these stories are available on our website, cppj.net.